Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Matt from C4 here. Um, can everybody hear me okay? We're going to give it another uh, one or two minutes just to make sure everybody has some time to join in, um, and then we'll kick it off. Okay, I think we're good to start. Um, thank you everybody for taking the time to join us for today's webinar. Um, we're gonna be going over some you know, parts and service opportunities here. We're gonna be uh, encompassing a lot of uh, recent uh, Google data, Google studies on parts and service opportunities and um, in the marketplace and where it stands right now. Today, it's going to be myself, uh, Matt Mulo, contractor here at C4 Analytics, and Kirk Steele, who is a strategic partner manager at Google. And so we'll kick this off. Uh, Kirk's going to take you through um, some of the recent Google Fixed Ops um, studies and information, and then we'll follow that up with um, some of the strategies that we have here at C4 Analytics to help capitalize on, on some of these greater opportunities in the fixed ops um, realm. So. Without further ado, I will pass this along to Kirk to start off with some of that um, Google Google information. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Uh, so as Matt mentioned, I'm a strategic partner manager here at Google, and I'm part of our broader automotive team. And as our teams went out talking with the OEMs and with dealers and with Tier 2, uh, fixed ops is de definitely a hot topic this year. And I think as vehicle sales are starting to flatten out and plateau and there's not that organic growth there anymore, that dealers and the OEMs are looking for new areas of growth and fixed ops is definitely um, a key area, both from a revenue and a profitability perspective where growth is out there to be had. So um, just to take a quick look at the three areas that I'm gonna be diving into today. Uh, for the first half of the webinar before I turn over to Matt. Um, first, just looking at the overall opportunity for fixed ops in the U.S. and what that looks like. Then next, as Matt mentioned, um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of research insights with you. So uh, last year we went out, our automotive team went out and commissioned a large research study where we talked to over 1,500 consumers who'd purchased, who'd made a fixed ops purchase in the last six months and ask them about their decision-making process and how they went through their journey before they made their purchase, and then how the role that digital played in that process. So sharing those insights, and then last, I'll kind of share some high-level next steps and recommendations, and then after that, I'll flip it over to Matt to kind of deep dive on how C4 can help you activate against these insights and put these recommendations into place. So with that, let's jump in. Um, looking at the opportunity, so in the U.S., fixed ops annually is a $340 billion market. It's massive, but dealers are only getting 29% of that, and there is, the market share there has continued to decline, 
And I think it's an area of the business that maybe hasn't received as much attention, at least from a marketing or digital marketing perspective. And so there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think, like I mentioned, is vehicle sales are starting to flatten out. Fixed ops can be a key area of growth. And I think Google is really well positioned to help you connect with these fixed ops buyers. So of the, um, the automotive queries or searches that happen on Google each month, 40% of them are fixed ops related. And so if you move on to the next slide, it shows that that's over 200 million fixed ops specific queries that happen on Google each month. And it's not just on search, it's also on YouTube as well. So we see the same thing, over 200 million monthly views of fixed ops related content on YouTube. So it's a massive market opportunity and Google's positioned really well to help you connect with these consumers and with these buyers. And so kind of jumping into the research findings, um, I'm really gonna focus on the who, the why, the what, and the where of these fixed ops buyers and how they go through the consumer, um, the consumer journey and their purchase decision. So first, jumping in and looking at the who. So the first thing that we wanted to understand is what's the breakdown between consumers who made a purchase because it was routine or scheduled and those who made a purchase because it was a reactive need that popped up that they needed to get fixed or addressed. And it was roughly a 60-40 split there with 58% routine and then 42% were reactive. And then the next thing that we looked at was the breakdown between what we call DIFM or the do it for me customers who wanted to take it into a professional and then the do it yourselfers or the DIYers. And this split was roughly 80-20. But I think a, an interesting thing here, just to drill a little bit deeper, is for those do it for me customers, roughly a third of them started out in the do it yourselfer bucket and then ultimately ended up having to take it into a mechanic and have the work done for them professionally. And so I think it's important to understand that, you know, it's not necessarily hard and fast between those two buckets. And somebody may start in one bucket and then move work to the other. So just understanding the dynamics there of the consumer journey. And then the next thing that we wanted to look at was in warranty versus out of warranty. So roughly a 70-30 split here. 31% uh, of consumers were under warranty, 69% were out of warranty. And I think an interesting thing here is that, you know, with the warranty, the customers who are under warranty, um, you may think that they are, you know, a captive audience when it comes to fixed ops. But what we found when we talked with these consumers is 55% of them were watching video and doing research, and 59% of them were doing research on their mobile device. So I think a key takeaway here is that even if they're under warranty, they're still doing research, they're still shopping around, they're doing it across mediums, and they're doing it across devices. So it's really critical to still show up and be there when these consumers, whether they're under warranty or out of warranty, are doing their research. So moving into the why, we really wanted to understand what was the purchase trigger um, for these consumers making their fixed ops purchase. And <clears throat> so you can see that you know standard service was 33%. They thought something needed to be fixed was 19%. They either had, they either had a part failure or damage of some kind was 19%. An in-vehicle alert like a check engine light was 12%. And then a service reminder was 10%. So this is a service reminder from the OEM or the dealer. And I think an important thing to call out here with this data is this is overall, but then when you look at the consumers who ultimately ended up going into a dealership for their service needs or to make a purchase, uh, for service reminder, that went up to 22%. So for roughly one in four buyers, 
went into a dealership because they got a service reminder. So I think that's a key thing to keep in mind and make sure you've got a strategy and structure in place to send out those service reminders to customers to stay top of mind and that will drive business back to the dealership. The next thing under why that we really wanted to take a look at is what were these consumers mindset or what were their preferences when they were making the, the fixed ops purchase decision? And you can see that, um, you know, for almost 58% was either they preferred to go to a local repair shop or they preferred to go to their specific dealer. But then down on from there, you know, 12% wanted to ensure they bought the correct part to do it themselves. For 12%, the business having a good re reputation was important to them. For 7%, it was who had the cheapest service or parts. For another 7%, it was, did that business carry the brand that they trusted? And then for 4%, it was fastest service. And so I think the key thing to call out here is sometimes there's a misconception that price drives everything. And I think what this data shows us and what consumers are telling us is that price is just one factor among many and that they, you know, Proximity to a dealer or a relationship that they've built is also an important factor as well. So moving into the what. So what is it that these consumers were having done when they went in for their purchase? And kind of the standard things you see here, 77% was they went in and got an oil change done, 53% were tires, 33% were getting a battery replaced, 32% were brakes, and 12% other. I think something that's really interesting here is this is what the consumers came in for initially. But then if you move on to the next slide, you'll see that 78% um, of consumers told us that when they went in for that one thing, they ultimately ended up having additional services performed for them. So it's a great upsell opportunity. And I think it just reinforces how critical it is to get in front of these consumers in the first place. Um, so that you can have the opportunity to um, have them get these additional services done. And um, on the next slide, it kind of shows what, what other additional services consumers had performed, kind of falls into roughly the same distribution, but an awesome opportunity to, if they come in for an oil change, you get the opportunity to do a battery and whatnot. Um, so just reinforces that point that you need to stay top of mind with consumers. And then the next thing we wanted to understand is, okay, the consumers have had a need, they've come in for a specific reason, and then where are they going? And we wanted to understand if a consumer had purchased a vehicle from a dealership, you know, the dealership they purchased from most recently, how likely were they to consider going back to that dealership when they had a fixed ops need? And 43% of consumers said that yes, they would consider going back to that dealership they'd purchased from most recently. And you see for some of the different categories or subsections for those who kind of fall into the scheduled or routine bucket, that goes up to 54%. And then the do it for me bucket was 45%. But here as well, as you kind of peel back the layers of the onion and dive a little bit deeper on the numbers, so of that 43% that said they would consider going back to that dealership, 61% of them were still shopping around. So even if you have a strong relationship with a consumer on the sales side, it's really critical to stay top of mind and stay in front of them because um, they're, they're still shopping around, even if they're willing to consider coming back to you. And then the other thing we wanted to look at is once you establish that relationship with that consumer for that initial, you know, fixed ops purchase or service need, how likely are they to stay loyal to you and be a repeat customer when they have additional needs that pop up? And these consumers are pretty loyal once they establish a relationship. So 79% said that after they'd made that initial fixed ops purchase, when they re-entered the market and had to make another purchase or get service done, they went back to that same business they went to the first time. So I think just, this just highlights, um, you need to get them in the door when they're searching and doing that research because they will stay loyal to you over time. 
And then the next thing we want to look at is, so what role did digital play in the purchase process, specifically search and video across screens? And first, we kind of wanted to understand what were the most helpful or influential sources that the consumers looked at when they were deciding. And number one was the service advisor or mechanics at the dealership or service center. Two was search. Three was friends and family. And then four were tires and parts retail sites like Amazon or AutoZone or Costco. You can see that of all the different online sources, search, consumers listed search as the most helpful source. But then when you ask them in terms of order, where did they turn to first? Out of all those sources, search is where they're turning to first. And so it's kind of the gateway and it's the tool that they use throughout the research process. And you want to make sure that even if you have somebody that you've got a long standing relationship with and they would consider coming back to you, if they're turning to search, you need to be there and stay in front of them and stay top of mind um, because there's an opportunity that another provider could get there and get in front of them. And then the next thing we wanted to um, take a look at is, okay, they're doing search, where are they doing it? And I don't think this one's really a surprise per se, is 83% of the consumers told us that they're turning to Google and using Google for their search. And for the do it for me customers, that goes up to 85%. And then reactive customers, that goes up to 87%. And then the other thing that we want to take a look at is, what was it that they were searching for when they turned to search to do research? And here's kind of the breakdown. They're looking for the vehicle manufacturer, um, looking at a specific part to repair their vehicle, looking for a repair shop or a quick service chain, local dealership or an auto parts store. And I think the kind of critical thing here to call out is you wanna make sure in working with C4 and developing your AdWords campaign strategy, is you've got good keyword coverage across these different terms, especially considering that you know, overall dealers are only capturing about 29% of um, the fixed ops market. There's an opportunity here to, when consumers are going and searching for these other categories, that you're showing up and convincing those customers to come into you. The other thing that we wanted to take a look at was um, what we call mobile first users or mobile first buyers. And these are consumers that started and finished the research process on their mobile devices. It was roughly four out of every 10 consumers fell into this category. And for them, they said that across both, you know, what sources were most helpful and, and, and influential and also where they turned first, search was where, what they listed. I think that's not necessarily a surprise per se, but then if you look at what uh, what they search for as opposed to the overall general you know consumer, the what they search for was very different. So these mobile first consumers, they're looking at pricing, offers or discounts, store hours and location. They're looking at specific part info and comparing options. They're looking at pricing in other locations, they're looking at part availability or they're watching a video. And you can see based off of these keywords that these are maybe a little bit closer or further down the funnel. These are people who are ready to make a purchase quickly. And one of the things you can do on Google is bid up on mobile users for certain keywords. So that's something that you know, I'd make sure you're working together with C4 on that you have a solid mobile strategy and you're targeting uh, these keywords that mobile users are more likely to search on. And then switching over to video and what role video played in the research process, 39% of consumers told us that they were using video to do research and help them decide. And you can see that for the do-it-yourselfers, that goes up to almost 60%. And then for the do-it-for-me consumers, that's 33%. And you know, similar on the search side, we want to understand where are these consumers going when they're using video. Not necessarily a surprise here as well is that 64% are turning to YouTube to do research. 
And for the do-it-yourselfer do consumers, that goes up to 69%. And for reactive consumers, that goes up to 75%. I think that's a really important insight right there with reactive consumers is when they have kind of an immediate urgent need that pops up with their vehicle, three out of four consumers are turning to YouTube to help them diagnose and figure out what's wrong before they take it into a professional. And I know I've definitely fallen into that category. A few months back, uh, my car started having you know, weird engine noises. And before I took it into a mechanic, I really wanted to educate myself and understand what might be the problem. And so the first thing I did was go to YouTube and look up engine noises for Mazda Protégés. And I was able to watch a couple of videos and kind of get a little bit better feel what might be wrong with my vehicle before I took it in. And I think a lot of consumers fall into that bucket. And if you look at what consumers are watching when they turn to online video and what they're telling us, it kind of falls into um, the theme that you see is educational and informational. So a lot are, 58% are watching do-it-yourselfer videos, 44% are these informational educational videos, 40% are looking at a specific vehicle model or part, 30, 36% are looking at professional reviews, and then 35% are looking at customer testimonials or reviews. And so consumers really are looking to get informed um, and looking for that assistance to help them make that purchase process. And that really is borne out in the data. And if you look specifically at the do it for me customers, because <clears throat> I think for the do it yourselfers, you know, it's very clear, yes, they're turning to YouTube to kind of get step-by-step -step instructions on how to um, fix the vehicle themselves. But for the do it for me consumers, it was really interesting because 70% of them told us that online video introduced them to a service center that they hadn't considered previously. So video can really be a tool to drive consideration and awareness. And then also 65% of them told us that they first heard about the service center that they visited via online video. So it not just drives consideration awareness, but it also drives action. And that kind of leads us into this next section of how you connect these digital actions with the offline transactions that are happening. And um, something that consumers told us is nearly 50% of them were calling directly from a search result. And then for mobile users, that actually went up to 55%. And then if you look at video, 36% of consumers who are using video in the research process told us that they either scheduled an appointment or visited a service center or parts retailer after watching the video. And then for the do it for me consumers, that went up to 42%. So you can see that both on search and video, that it's not, that there's a strong link there between the research that they're doing digitally and then the action that is driving at the dealership and at these service centers. And then jumping into kind of my last section here before I flip it over to Matt, just some high level recommendations that we make for dealers on as they get started on building out their digital strategy for fixed ops. So starting with search, we've got it broken down here into three simple steps. The first one is show up. So as we're out there across the country talking with the different dealers, um, I'm frankly shocked that a lot of times dealers don't have any fixed ops campaigns running in AdWords. And that's so critical. You can see based off the data that I shared that consumers are turning to search and to video and to Google to do research. But if you don't have any campaigns running, you can't be there and can't show up when they're doing that research. That's the first thing is make sure that you're taking a portion of your marketing budget allocated to fixed ops and putting that on digital so you can connect with those consumers as they're doing research. The next thing that we see is as we're talking with dealers and looking at their digital presence for fixed ops is too many dealer websites. Um, they're very well built out on the sales side for vehicles and there's a lot of fresh relevant content there. There's a lot of informational educational content there, 
But then if you go and look at the fixed ops portion of a dealer's website, it's pretty sparse. The content isn't fresh, it's stale, it's outdated. There's only a few pages. And especially if you look at booking a service appointment and on a mobile device, it can be brutally painful and it's not intuitive. And so that's one thing that I'd encourage you to do is take a, you know, a fresh look at your fixed off side of your website and see if you're a consumer, you know, if the relevant content is there, if it's fresh, and if not, put a strategy in place to build that out. And then the third thing on search is get smarter. So if your OEM is running fixed ops campaigns at tier one and tier two, make sure that you're coordinated with what they're running. And the other part of getting smart is making sure that you're leveraging all of Google's tools and resources to help you connect with these consumers in a more content and intent aware way. One of those ways to do that is customer match. So with Customer Match, you can take your CRM database where you've got consumers' emails and upload that, and then you can target those consumers either on AdWords or on YouTube and stay top of mind with them and remind them of service specials you have going on or just to come in and um, get their routine maintenance done. And then next, jumping specifically to mobile. And I won't go into the first two steps here because they're pretty similar to search. But the third step here is super critical. So for consumers, these mobile first consumers that I mentioned, which are roughly four in 10 of fixed ops buyers, it's so critical to be fast and to be quick. So as we go out and look at a lot of dealers' websites on mobile, too many of them are way too slow. So what we recommend as the best practice is that your mobile page should load within three seconds. And as we've looked at a lot of dealers' websites across the country, the average is anywhere from, you know, some of the best we've seen is around nine seconds, but it's, you know, anywhere as high as 18 to over 20 seconds to load. And consumers, if that's the experience they're getting, they're gonna bounce. They're gonna go somewhere else because they're gonna get frustrated. And so you want to make sure that your mobile website is optimized and it's quick. And the other thing um, is that your mobile website is intuitive and fast and you're getting information to the consumers as quickly as possible. And I just mentioned the example of booking a service appointment. One thing I'd encourage you to do is after this call is pull out your mobile device and try and book a service appointment from your phone. And how easy and seamless and frictionless is it or is it a frustrating experience? And if it's a frustrating experience, you may be losing consumers because they're getting bogged down and having to fill out forms that aren't friendly on a mobile device, and they may be going elsewhere. And then last but not least is video. So kind of the three steps we recommend on video is starting with creating content. So this is more on the organic side of your YouTube channel is make sure you've got content built out around those areas that I mentioned that consumers are watching. So specifically around kind of this informational, educational content and help them, help educate them so that they feel comfortable about coming to you for their fixed ops needs. And then with step two is you trans transition into paid videos on YouTube. Work with C4 to make sure that you're taking advantage of the wealth of automotive specific audience targeting that we have. You know, we've got it <coughs> granular down to the point where you can you know, do targeting around car batteries, car brakes, oil changes, and things like that. So make sure that you're working with C4 to take advantage of that. And then the third step is with video is drive action. And we actually just came out with a new ad format on YouTube, which is called TrueView for Action. It is specifically geared towards driving these consumers to take an action like calling your dealership, visiting your website, and you have these customizable buttons that you can add in to the ad where you can, you know, for example, say schedule a service appointment or you know, call the dealership. And this is a great way to highlight fixed ops um, specific campaigns, whether it be you know, oil changes or tire rotation and whatnot, but it's a great way to drive action that's further down the funnel when those consumers are ready to make a purchase. 
And the other thing, a new um, feature that we've rolled out that makes it easier for consumers to take action after watching a YouTube video is location extensions. So this will be a little bar at the bottom of the video uh, where if a consumer clicks on it, especially if they're on their mobile device, it'll give them directions on how to navigate to your store. Um, it just makes it that much more frictionless and seamless for them to go to you to get their needs taken care of. And so with that, that's all the content that I have. So I'll flip it over to Matt to dive into how C4 puts the this research and these insights to practice. Thank you, Kirk. Much appreciated. Um, I'm going to go right into some of our fixed op strategies, the things that we, we can do to capitalize on these opportunities. Um, so first, Obviously, what we want to do, our approach is, you know, targeting your existing customers and especially those inactive customers. Really try to touch on everybody within your database, keep them engaged, and um, incite the action to keep them with you. So the first thing would be to go after and engage those routine or scheduled maintenance customers that Kirk was speaking about from within your customer database. And so as you see here, you know, Kirk's already gone over this, but I'm going to touch on this because they directly pertain to some of our strategies. And, you know, as Kirk said, you know, standard service, that's that number one, but directly following that 19%, um, go there for what they need for maintenance, you know, like hearing a strange noise in their vehicle, another 19% um, reference unforeseen um, dealership or damage and parts failure. 12% said that the vehicle alerts, such as like the check engine light, 10% the reminder from the OEM, 3% was an in-app notification or a recall. And so with that in mind, we obviously want to capitalize on these customers so that we can incite the action for them because 22% of them, 22 of them said that service reminders trigger their purchase. And so if you guys are the first ones to hit them with the service reminders, that's going to prevent them from from either you know, getting it on their vehicle and then picking dealerships or different locations to go to. Um, one of the strategies for this would be to create custom um, service specials, part specials e-blasts, you know, targeting those customers um, that are you know, within your database who maybe are coming up for those scheduled routine maintenance appointments or haven't been in there in the past, you know, or you know, customers who have purchased but never done their maintenance with you in the past, and you can push aggressive service special offers directly to them through your customer database with segmented audience lists so you can get the greatest engagement on the websites. Another thing would be, you know, to rework your service specials page. You know, get away from the templates that the, that the dealer websites provide to you, the different website platforms, and really, you know, create these custom pages that, you know, have those conversion elements incorporated. You know, the, really, the goal here is to, one, bolster your uh, organic presence, through our custom content rewrites on here. Um, also, you know, have a page right here like you, that pushes these offers that you can direct your other ads to, again, to convert them at the highest rate. And as you can see here, you know, those optimized call to action buttons, aggressive offers, you know, responsive page design so that on both mobile and desktop, you're still getting these clear, concise, aggressive offers in the correct formatting. One of the things, you know, when you, bait, you build out that, that page, another thing we can do, you know, you can direct them to your standard pages on site, but if you have those pages created and you have the correct conversion elements on site, you can take it a step further and really start running some of those aggressive service customer match Google search ads. And so what you do is you take that database, you take that audience list, and you serve ads directly to them. And what it would be would be, you know, individuals that um, are looking for searching for different service keywords, you know, prior to them going to those different, you know, larger providers like Pep Boys and Goodyear, uh, American Tire Depot, you know, you want to make sure that you're capturing them before they have the option and opportunity to go to those other sources. And here again, just referencing back to some of the information that Kurt had provided, you know, what the, what's the mindset and, and what's that, you know, consumer preference when they're, when they're deciding. And as you can see here, you know, those, you know, the bet, you know, way to understand this is that, you know, the do it for, do it for me and the do it yourself customers. And you know, we found that more than half of them, 58% prefer to get their service done by that local auto repair shop. You know, 12% wanted um, to purchase the right part. Another 12% said 
said that they didn't care as long as the place had a good reputation. 7% said they decided based off the cheapest price. And another 7% didn't care as long as uh, they carried the brands they trusted and they stayed with them. So with that in mind, you know, there's plenty of opportunities here to get in front of them and touch on each of these, whether it be, you know, you know, highlighting your, your reputation or, you know, touching on those customers who are deciding based off of price. You know, we can create, you know, multiple different custom service pages. Here's one, for example, which is, you know, that comparison page. You take some of those large competitors that you face off against and you put your best prices out there against theirs. You only really want to highlight the places where you can beat them out and your account manager is going to help you to decide which ones. You know, you let them know and they'll run the analysis. But, you know, this is a page that can really be aggressively positioned against some of these top competitors to let those consumers know that you guys, in fact, have the best price and the best, uh, best place to go to for all their service needs. And this can be done through comparison pages. You can also incorporate reviews ratings against some of those competitors in here. You can do other pages such as like why service at our dealership pages, really to emphasize the key differentiating factors that you hold up over some of these main competitors. Taking it a step further, you can also do service conquest display, you know, as aggressive as possible or as aggressive as you want to be. The manufacturer allows you to be, you know, we can create custom display ads that, you know, are targeting in market buyers for, you know, some of these opposing brand or even some of these competing dealerships consumers. And so the goal here is really to, you know, get in front of them, you know, while they're still deciding on where they want to go to, you target based off in market buyer for service and parts, you know, for opposing brands or those other consumers. And what you want to do is bring them directly to your website, you know, and if you already have that, you know, comparison page on the, uh, for all the different services that you do, the brakes, the parts, the tires, you have that comparison page there and you're linking them directly there or your custom service portal page, they're going to convert at a higher rate too. And so you're garnering new business, not only, um, not only retaining your customer base, but you can also reach out and grab, you know, others customer bases as well with some aggressive targeting and aggressive messaging. Moving on, you know, we want to also touch on how to capture the reactive or those cross shopping customers. And so, you know, again, referencing back, you know, the most helpful online research tool, you know, is search advertising. You know, they are going to the dealers, their service advisors or mechanics at the dealership, but what they're doing for their self research, you know, on the advertising network, the Google search network, you know, it, it's focused on search. And so that's going to be that source you want to make sure that you're present on to capture this. Because as, it's, as it says right here, you know, we found 30% first search for the manufacturer of their vehicle and for scheduling the do-it-yourself buyers, I mean, it's slightly higher than that even. It's 30, at 36% and 41%. And so we want to make sure that we're capitalize, capitalizing on this, but also making sure that we're you know, really touching on that vehicle manufacturer and staying away from some of those, uh, those keyword terms that you know, all, the, you know, all those big box manufacturers like you know, the Auto Zones and the Pep Boys are going to be bidding on. And so the strategy here that we'd want to implement for you is to make sure, as you can see here on the left-hand side, that's the general oil change search, right? And what this is, is you can see there, for example, you know, Midas is showing up, the Pep Boys are showing up, you know, the Firestone is showing up. So these are, these are keywords that everybody is going to be bidding on, on-brand, off-brand, and larger manufacturers. You know, as you saw from that previous infographic, you know, they're searching for that, that vehicle brand first and foremost. So the strategy is going to be to include that brand in front of that search too, because what this is going to do is it's going to lessen the competition. It's going to get you away from some of these larger big box manufacturers and off-brand competitors. So it's going to lower your cost per click. And it's also going to improve the engagement on the ads. It's going to improve the quality score because if you're a Toyota dealer and the search is for a Toyota oil change and they're being directed to a website that's optimized for Toyota and Toyota service, um, service entities and services, you're going to be able to have a lower cost and a higher quality score, which is what is going to drive down that cost is more relevant content. Going into some more of the information that Kirk had had already gone over, you know, the, the main things that you that you're seeing being searched here for those customers for their servicing needs is the oil changes, the tires, the batteries, brakes, and then other that batch of other encompasses many other services. So what we want to do and what we do 
consistently here for dealers running aggressive service and part strategies is make sure that you're breaking these out into their own specific ad groups. What this allows you to do is one, allocate specific budgets towards you know, the different interest levels on, you know, for oil changes for tires. You don't want to have same budgets across the board if there's different search volume and different interests here. So breaking them down into these different ad groups allows you to you know, dedicate budgets toward, towards it, you know, correct amounts, but it also allows you to create specific ads that are towards each and every one of these services, you know, keywords specific towards each and every one of these services. And so not only the ad groups, yes, that does play a, a large role in this, but the ad copy is also a, a key piece to this, this strategy. You know, you want to make sure that you have custom ad copy built out with all your extensions, make sure that you're taking up the space on the site, uh, make sure that it's linking to the most relevant content on site. And again, having those separate ad groups allows you to have custom ad copy driven towards each and every one of these services, especially when you have special offers there too. It's going to be very specific towards each and every one of those services. So you need those ad groups built out and you need aggressive why buy messaging also incorporated into that ad copy. And so when looking into what they looked up on their mobile devices, you know, because it's going to play a different role in mobile than it does desktop. It always does. And, and so what they're looking for on their mobile devices is pricing offers or discounts, store hours and location, parts info, you know, compare, comparison options. And so taking this a step further, you know, what's driving? What are they doing? What are these mobile consumers after they search? What actions are they taking? And 55% of those are calling directly from those mobile ads. You know, 42% of those are scheduling an appointment or visiting the dealership, you know, so, so it offers a great opportunity if you're utilizing the correct extensions. And so here's an example of one of those ads. You want to make sure, as you can see, that either they're driving to the dealership, they're scheduling their service, or they're calling the, the dealership directly, the largest amount calling them directly. So using all the Google tools, all the resources in those different extensions is going to be key. It's going to extend your ads. It's going to help your click-through rate. But if you're serving the consumers, you know, those click to calls, that quick click to call right there, the service specials links, and even that, you know, where it says in that ad in the red box there, the town dash street name, you know, that's going to be get location details, which will drive them straight to the dealership. And so you're, you're serving them exactly what actions they're going to be taking, and it's going to make their page path and their journey a lot easier towards that conversion, whether it be scheduling a service appointment or ordering that part. Another thing we can do on the search network is if then ads and what these are is it lets you dynamically change insert um, and pull out ad copy based off of different factors. Those factors being either the audience group or the device, you know, so if it's a mobile shopper, you serve them mobile specific ad copy, you know, aggressive ad copy. If it's, you know, a remarketing buyer, somebody who's been to your website in the past you can change the offer that they show or get a little bit more aggressive, you know, and dynamically insert that information right into your ads. You know, so it's going to, again, improve your click-through rates and speak more clearly to that consumer and make that ad more custom to them. Here's just an example of that if then ad right here where you give returning or that mobile service shopper a special offer based off the device or based off of, you know, what actions they previously took on the website. And so if they've been there looking at their parts and service specials before, but they didn't convert, you know, when you serve this ad on the remarketing list with the if then ads here, you can serve an aggressive offer to them directly, you know, that's, you know, inciting them to take that next step. Moving on through, you know, how to capture service customers through, through ways ads, you know, because there's a number of different ways to do these. Uh, to target these customers. There's a number of different touch points that you want to be in front of your consumers on in order to stay in front of them a lot, prevent them from going to your competitors really, and, and also keep them engaged and brand your dealership for, you know, being a mecca of parts and service. And so here's some recent studies, you know, that shows, you know, every five minutes, there's 67 navigations that occur, occur to a car, uh, car service venue on Waze in the U.S. So it shows that you know, there's definitely an audience there for it. And 72% of these wagers are getting their car serviced three to five times a year annually. So again, you know, just speaking towards the opportunity that there, there is even to advertise on, on ways and, and with some of the location tools they have. You know, and this will help you not only build awareness for your service um, and part centers, 
but also you know get them um, driven directly to your dealership, you know your store location specifically, with the goal of increasing floor traffic. And so here's just one of the things, you know, sort of like the base of, of setting this up on Waze, and where it would be having a branded pin there. So it you know creates awareness to the location of your dealership that you're a nearby store. So if they are interested in that, it's going to showcase you up there when your competitors are most likely not going to have um, a pinned location for the service and parts department. You can also take a step further on this and do promoted search on here, which would basically, you know, it would always allow for your business to serve above some of these other results. You know, you'd be that ad at the top of the at the top of the locations. It's going to dynamically pull it up, um, and the consumer is driving by your location. And so, again, it's a great way to consistently keep your name in front of these customers that are already on the road and driving, and you know, many a times going to be looking for um, a service or parts department. And here is what's called the zero speed takeover. So what this is is basically a digital billboard that reaches out to the drivers, it grabs their attention, um, and it really does engage them at the highest rate. It automatically you know, populates this bar up here where it says drive there, where if they clicked on that, it changes their route directly to your dealership. And so there is there is a minimum spend with these, and this is something where you can work with your account manager on to see what works best for you. Um, but again, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to, to get your branding out there and to get some additional floor traffic to your dealership at really a pretty minimum, pretty minimal cost. And here's just some more um, information on that zero speed takeover. Really, like, again, to encourage drivers to visit your dealership for, say, an oil change. You know, and, and then as you can see here, some of those sample results, you know, taking on a three-month average, you know, 870,000 of those drivers um, were reached with these ads. 569 navigated to a dealership. So on average about six per day. So you know pretty good return if those are turning over into you know those service scheduled appointments, you know, oil changes, tires, and then you guys are also able to upsell them, you know, you couldn't be getting your return, you know, within you know a matter of a few days. And so that's you know it's a great opportunity. It's another complimentary piece of what we've been able to do. You know, again, you know, there's always those you know greater opportunities on the Google search network. Um, and on your website itself, just to get that sewed up so you can have the best possible organic presence and, and conversion elements on your website. You know, but again, there's there's a number of different tools. There's e we even have a you know a number of other ones that are sort of in our um, in our toolbox that you can discuss with your account manager. You can let us know if you you want to see some additional options as well, and we can we can bring those to the weekly calls and really decide on a plan because you know as Kirk says and at the as the data shows. You know, you, you're really going to uh, be able to capitalize on these opportunities. There's vast opportunities currently for, for the last Google study, and, and you want to make sure that you're capturing it and it's not your competition and you're there before your competitors are. And so if there's, there's any questions, I know um, we can open up the floor uh, for some questions. We can chat them in, or you can bring them to your account manager, um, and they'll work with their team, um, get you some answers, and get you some more information.